Hello there. Today we're going to talk about routing in Phoenix. Now, how can I find which routes my Phoenix backend has? There are two ways. My favorite way, which in my opinion is the easiest way, is you go inside the lib folder, inside the shop web, there is a router.ex file. And this is where you can find all your routes. For now, completely ignore the pipeline here. So ignore this, ignore that, and look for a function called scope. This is where you can find your routes. So inside scope, you can have, you can take a look here and you can see that we have three routes. They're both for a get request and that's it. And what's the other way? You can open up your terminal and then you can type mix phx dot routes. And as you can see here, we have lots of routes. The only ones that we created are the top three. Everything else was automatically generated by Phoenix. Some of them are used to do the auto reload whenever you change a file. There are other ones that, for example, we have forward slash dev forward slash mailbox. That's where you can see which emails you sent. They're very useful. Now, one terminal tip for you here is that we can use a function called grep to filter the routes. So let's say that I just want to see the product's routes. Then you can call mix phx.routes and then you're going to do a pipe. Now this is very similar to Elixir, funny enough, but the thing is on the terminal, the pipe is just a vertical line and not a vertical line followed by this greater than sign. It's just a vertical line and then grep, whoops, nope, grep products because I just want to see the products. There we go. We have two routes for the products. We have get products, which goes to the product controller and calls the index action. And then products forward slash ID, which also goes to the product controller and calls the show action. Okay. But let's say that maybe I want to create a complete CRUD. I don't want to have just a get. I want to get a post, put, patch, delete. I want the whole CRUD. Is there an easier way to do that? Or do I have to manually write get products, post products, delete products? That's very verbose. Is there a better way? Yes, there is. You can go back to your scope here. And then inside, you can say resources. The first parameter is the path. So here I'm going to say forward slash uh, products. And actually, I'm going to comment these two uh, down. And then now you need your controller and that's it. So I'm going to say product controller. Okay. We have product controller. And what about the action? Do I need to pass an action here? As you can see from the tooltip from VS Code, we don't have an action as the third parameter. We have an optional parameter. So what's up with that? Why, why don't I need to pass an action? That's because resources is going to automatically generate all the CRUD operations for you. So if you open up terminal, I'm going to run the same command, list all the routes and filter by products. Whoa, now we have lots of things here. We have get, post, patch, put, delete, and resources automatically wired the controller to the action. So we didn't have to manually write the action names. This is very cool. This is the power of resources. Now let's say that maybe I don't have the complete CRUD. Maybe I have just, I mean, as you can see on top, I just have the, the index and the show. Do I need to, I don't know, stop using resources because I'm not using the complete CRUD operations? No, you can pass an optional parameter here called only. Only accepts a list of atoms. And here you can define which uh, operations from the CRUD you want to execute. So if I go back to the terminal and scroll up, where's my history? Let me call that again. Okay, so 
from all of these CRUD operations, I just have the index and show. So I can go back to the code and add index and then show. Let me save that. I'm going to go back to the terminal, run the same function. Wow, now we just have two routes. And there's also the, the counter function to only. Maybe I have all the CRUD operations except one. Let's say that I don't want to delete a product. So instead of passing only, you're going to pass except. And the only action that I do not want to execute is delete. Let's run this once more. Now we have the complete CRUD, but as you can see, the delete is no longer here. So the resources function is extremely useful. For now, we just have two uh, actions inside the product controller, two routes. So I think I'll go back to the get uh, function instead of resources. I think it's uh, more explicit and I like code that is explicit. So I'm going to uncomment this, delete this. All right. How about nested routes? How can we create a nested route? Let's say, for example, that inside our video game e-commerce, I have a user's route. So I'm going to create this. A user's resources. Resources. It's going to be users. Okay. For now, I'm going to create a fake controller called user controller. Okay. And that's it. That's the resources, right? So if I run... And then that there's like a bug on this file. Whenever you type like a new controller, if you scroll up, oh, oh, actually, this is not that bug. Sorry, forget everything I just said. Let me go back to the terminal. The warning that we're getting is that we're using a controller that doesn't exist, but we're going to ignore that for now. So I'm going to grab by users. Okay, users. Now we have the complete complete CRUD operations for users, but what if the users have a post or comments? I don't know. And I want to show all the blog posts from a user. Or maybe I have like, I want to show the products from a user. So I could do the following. You're going to keep this line of code here, but now as the third parameter, you're going to pass a do and and then here you can add another re pair of resources so we can say resources I'm gonna say uh, posts that is going to come from a post controller that does not exist so if I go back to my terminal and I want to filter by users again now we have the complete CRUD operations from users and we also have the complete CRUD operations for blog posts inside users. So now you have like a get of users, user ID and post. I assume this is going to list all the posts for this specific user. There's also a post for users, user ID and post. This is going to create a post for a specific user. And of course, you don't need to add resources inside resources. Let's say that, for example, I just have a get here. So instead of resources, I can just keep using my get post put uh, functions. If I hit save and I go back to the terminal, ignore the warnings for now. Uh, now we have the only nested route that we have is the get that we define it. We have the complete CRUD operations for users and we have a nested get users, user ID and post at the end. This is the only one, the only post resource that we have nested inside users. Very cool. Now let's talk about scopes. We have this scope right here that we are playing around for the last videos. This means that whenever we have a route that starts with this forward slash, which is the root, then I'm going to run all of this inside. I am going to run the pipe through 
that I'm going to explain and all the routes that I define. But what if I want to have a JSON API? Can I create a forward slash API route? Yes, you can. You can create, I mean, not a route, you can create a scope. So here, let's say that I have my UI, but I also want to have the same resources under our JSON API. Now we could have a different controller to, I don't know, maybe query a different set of data and display it uh, differently. But for this video specifically, I'm just gonna copy paste. Now, if I go back to my routes and I'm going to grab by API, let's see what we have back. Whoa, we have the same routes, but now they all start with forward slash API. And as I mentioned, you can have a different controller, render a different uh, JSON, for example, or render anything that you want. As long as the scope starts with forward slash API, this is going to run, okay? So this is scoped routes. Of course, you can also have anything you want here. You can have forward slash admin, like dashboard or something. But now we just have forward slash API. So we're not going to use this for now. I'm just going to leave this commented. Okay, now, uh, actually, let me give you another example. Let's say that I have a scope. This scope is our internal dashboard. Let's say that whenever a user log in, he's going to go to the forward slash dashboard. So I'm going to create dash, oops, slash dashboard. And then followed by shop web do. All right, this is our scope. We know how this works. We can define our first route. The, this we could have like a get uh, root. Uh, I can have um, like a dashboard controller. Dashboard controller. And then inside I'm going to call the index action. Okay. This, this is enough for us to have a route, a root route inside our dashboard. But now we're going to talk about pipelines. As I mentioned previously, a pipeline is just a collection of plugs that run in order. So the first plug that runs is this accepts HTML and the final one is our custom plug called set console. This runs in order. And then we have a completely different pipeline called API. And then inside the scope, you can define which pipelines you want to run. You can run one pipeline. So you're going to type pipe through followed by an atom with the name of the pipeline that you want to run. So our dashboard, I assume it's going to include a bunch of views and we're going to run on the browser. So we can just type pipe through and then the name of our pipeline, which is browser. Okay. What if I want to run more than one pipeline? Can I do that? Because for example, on this forward slash dashboard route, we want to run that on the browser. So we want to run all of that plugs, but maybe I also want to ensure that the user is authenticated. Can we create a plug and a pipeline for authentication? Yes, we can. So let me scroll up below the pipeline API. I can create a custom pipeline called pipeline auth, for example, auth do. And then inside I could create a custom plug like plug is equal to plugs dot, uh, I don't know, ensure authenticated, authenticated. Okay. Now this is a custom plug. If you don't know what a plug is, I already have a video explaining what a plug is. And we have one entire video where I create a custom plug called set console. So if you go to the plugs folder, there's a set console here. This is a custom plug that we created for one of the videos from this crash course. So here we have another custom pipeline called auth. We want to run a custom plug called ensure authenticated. And here on our dashboard, I can say 
if I want to run more than one pipeline, instead of running just one atom, I can pass a list of atoms. So here is browser followed by auth. And that's it. That's all you need to do in order to run two pipelines and they run in order. So first, make sure that the browser pipeline is running and then the auth. Or I don't know, maybe you want to run the auth first, like on the auth uh, pipeline inside of this custom plug here, you can read uh, the cookies and see if there's a session stored on the cookies. If there's not, then just completely ignore all the other plugs. You can do a halt inside your plug to stop the execution. And then, I don't know, do a redirect or something. So maybe there is a reason to run the auth pipeline before the browser, but just know that they run uh, sequentially. Okay, so that's it for routing. That's pretty easy in my opinion. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.